Ayo, chapter 105 was so hype! Seeing the little girl make a reappearance that calls Kafka Mr. Kaiju Man, giving inspiration to everybody that was in that shelter, that Kaiju number 8 is here to save us. He is going to protect us. Seeing the citizens finally see a Kaiju face-off with one of these Kaiju defending humans is going to give us a lot of implications for how are humans going to see Kaiju number 8 moving forward. Seeing Kafka jumping back and forth like Goku, what a shout out to the GOAT. R.I.P. Toriyama, but seeing Matsumoto give a shout out to one of the greatest characters of all time like this got me lit. And obviously, seeing Kafka have his nod win moment, come on, yo. But even with all of that said, I think that this chapter personally was made to be very hype because we have our anime coming here in a couple of days. But if you actually look at the context of this chapter, I think that things are looking grim for Kafka right now. Kaiju number nine is gearing up to fight Kafka, and Kafka is about to use his squadron style technique against Kaiju number nine to hopefully take the lead in this fight. But there is one thing that Kafka is not accounting for. The person that perfected the squadron style technique is Isao Shinomiya. And Kaiju number nine absorbed Isao. So if Kaiju number 9 absorbed Isao, the same technique that Kafka is about to use against him, Kaiju number 9 already knows that technique, but better. And not only that, before Kafka even started using this technique, Kurusu already said that Kaiju number 8 was being overpowered by Kaiju number 9. Things are looking grim because we are just waiting for uh, basically kaiju number nine next chapter in my mind is literally going to have an aizen versus ichigo moment and whenever aizen stops ichigo's blade with one finger but i'm getting ahead of myself we got to talk about the good too so let's get into it <laughs> So chapter 105 starts off very grim with us seeing what things look like from a citizen's point of view inside of these underground bunkers. At this point, all of these citizens have evacuated the cities to get away from this attack that Kaiju number 9 is leading, and they are watching everything that's happening above ground on a TV. And on this TV, they see that another Kaiju shows up alongside Kaiju number 9, and they are thinking to themselves, at this point, we already didn't have a chance against Kaiju number 9, and now another Kaiju is here. What are we going to do until the MVP, the little girl, we'll call her a little girl, comes out and says, hey, y'all, this is the same kaiju that came and saved me and my mom from another kaiju all these months ago. We are going to be OK. This kaiju is going to save us. I promise you. And that's when all these citizens start realizing, oh, dang, like, I guess we have seen this kaiju before. This is the Kaiju number eight that we saw on the news. An official announcement goes through that Kafka has arrived at Tachikawa base, boy. Come on. Come on. And it is very hype that it is announced that Kaiju number eight has shown up at Tachikawa base. This is going to give everybody in the Defense Force hope. But even more so, what I'm curious of is how are these citizens going to view Kaiju number eight defending them from Kaiju number nine? They are going to see two monsters fighting against each other, but one monster will be fighting for them. Is that something that the citizens can accept? Is that something that they are ready to see? And even more so, if at any point during this battle, Kafka reveals or just lets down his Kaiju number eight side, if he shows that he can transform between human and Kaiju, how are the citizens going to react to that? They have first row seats to all of this. And I think part of the reason that Kaiju number nine is streaming this to everybody is not only to show people that he was trying to absorb Mina and let all that hope drain from everybody in the defense force as well as the citizens. I think that Kaiju number nine is hoping that at some point it is revealed that Kaiju number eight is also Kafka because who knows what sort of chaos that can bring about. So I am very curious to see how this storyline keeps on playing out. Maybe I'm looking more into it than I need to be, but I really think that the citizens in Kafka are going to be huge moving forward as far as how are the citizens going to react to Kaiju number eight fighting alongside the defense force. 
Do the citizens even know that the defense force is using Kaiju number eight to their aid? That's a whole question in itself, and that's going to be wild, bro. Esau led this project of trying to have a Kaiju fight alongside the defense force. So who knows what is going to happen now that this information is going to be public once this war is over. After this, Kafka goes over and sets Mina on the ground and lets her know, I'm sorry that I'm late, but I'm here to help. He also sees Bako on the ground, goes over and gives Bako a little pet on the head and is like, hey bro, thank you for being the MVP and even giving me a chance to have the opening to save Mina. And while all this is happening, Kaiju number nine is over there watching and regenerating his arm and asking himself, how did Kaiju number eight even make it over here in time? There should have been enough distractions that I should have been able to take care of all of this without having any distractions other than Bako. He kind of does the Goku sense over to where Kafka just came from and senses the same presence that Kafka sensed whenever Reno showed up to the battlefield. And that is the presence of Kaiju number six. And at this point, Kaiju number six was still a surprise factor to number nine. Number nine still thought that there was nobody in the defense force that was capable of using the number six suit. So we do have something that has surprised nine. And even with that information, nine says, hey bro, this is just a small hiccup and it can very much so be remedied. It doesn't matter that you showed up here number eight. But between that, bro, I think one of my favorite parts of this chapter was Hoshina buzzing over to Kafka and letting him know, hey, your job is to take out number nine. Right now, you basically only have until all of us in the Defense Force can't fight back anymore. Once we can't fight back, we're done, bro. The Defense Force is going to fall, so you have to beat number nine before that happens. Kafka starts jumping back and forth like Goku. He says, hey, I'm going to win no matter what. Nah, I'd win. And that was lit, bro. Lit. Him and Kaiju number nine have their first face off. They both kind of just stare at each other for a little bit. We see everybody's reaction of just utter silence. It is literally the calm before the storm. And even us as readers feel this same exact way. We have been waiting since chapter, I don't know what, 50 something. Since Kaiju number eight and Narumi were facing off against number nine after nine absorbed Esau. That is how long we have been waiting for a matchup with number nine. That is how much time has gone by. So the reason for this calm before the storm makes complete sense. Kaiju number eight is nervous. The citizens are nervous. The defense force is nervous. The only person probably not nervous is number nine because he had the gift of preparation. He was prepared for this moment fully. So seeing just their first scrap off here, bro, and throwing those forearms and everything explodes near them, it is going to be a crazy battle that is going to cause a lot of destruction. And hopefully that destruction doesn't travel, right? Hopefully it doesn't carry. Because again, we know that people are hiding out inside of these shelters underneath ground. So hopefully they are far enough underneath ground that they are safe and they are unaffected. But also, who knows how much destruction is going to happen in this Tachikawa base area based off of their fight that they're having. Kaiju number eight throws that punch against number nine. And Kurusu even told us, hey, number nine is literally being overpowered right now. And Kafka tells himself, I know that number nine is strong, but that's the reason I've been training. And we see him leaving off with throwing his fist together, just like Esau did, getting ready to throw out the Defense Force Squadron style combat technique against Kaiju number nine. But that's text, bro. That text on the last page was there for a reason. Matsumoto wanted you to see that for a reason. I will read exactly what it says. It says, Defense Force style combat technique, the same style that was perfected by Isao Shinomiya. And Isao Shinomiya is bolded. And you know exactly why it is bolded. We said it in the beginning of the video. Kaiju number nine absorbed Isao Shinomiya. So he is now the person that has perfected the squadron style technique. Kafka can't use this against Kaiju number nine because Kaiju number nine can literally use it better than Kafka. Like I said in the beginning of this video, this is going to be a moment where Kafka is going to unleash everything in this punch. It's going to be crazy, bro. It's going to be a dope punch. But Kaiju number nine, bro, is probably going to be more than ready to see a squadron style punch coming his way. 
So who knows how this fight is going to go? Because they both are still going to have a bunch of tricks to pull out of their bag, right? The fight isn't only going to last a couple of chapters. I imagine this fight going, sheesh, probably eight chapters, bro. Five to eight chapters. But regardless, things are not going to be looking good for Kafka one-on-one. -on -one. We need Mina to come out of that state so that she can fight side by side with Kafka. Mina can't beat Kaiju number nine one on one. And I'm telling you right now, I don't think that Kafka can beat Kaiju number nine one on one. But together, they without a doubt have a chance to beat Kaiju number nine. And I wanna say this, I don't think that Kaiju number eight is strong enough right now to verse number nine. But I've referenced this in a video before. Kaiju number eight is going to get a mid fight power up versus Kaiju number nine. I think that that power up is going to be Kafka's ability to communicate with number eight. Once number eight and Kafka finally communicate together, that is when we are going to see a rise in their power. The same exact way as whenever number four and Kikoru communicated with each other, we saw that direct correlation end up resulting in a rise of Kikoru's fortitude level, or not fortitude, but combat unleashed percentage, right? She climbed all the way up to 94%. She was moving at the same speed as Hikari because she has that connection with number four. She's seeing those memories that number four is showing to Kikoru. And that is exactly what we are gonna need happen with number eight, and it will happen during this battle. That is my one prediction for this fight. Mid fight level up for Kafka, but other than that, we will see because number nine is looking brolic right now. And I hate how cold his speeches are, bro. Number nine is such a cool villain. I know y'all agree with me. Or maybe I'm just, maybe I'm glazing too much, yeah? Maybe. But regardless, we got our anime coming up in a couple of days. I'm going to be dropping a reaction video of the anime the day of whenever I watch it. So be ready for that. I'm also hoping to drop a video tomorrow too. So today, tomorrow, Saturday, all kaiju number eight for y'all, bro. So, hey, tune back into the channel. If you watch this video, as always, arigato. And I will catch y'all later this week. Peace.